is blue hydrogen essential in the near term to leverage existing infrastructure and enable this great transition we're talking about? Uh, fascinating. You've you've loaded that question a little bit with the word essential. In my opinion, my opinion. Listen, there's several of us on the call, and I'd love to hear the other guys' opinions later on. Is blue hydrogen essential? No. Can it help? Yep, probably. And again, when you put that word essential in there, that's where I'm kind of going. Yeah, that's going to get the answer no from me. But can it help? Yes, probably. And I'll ask all where and why can it help? You know, who is blue hydrogen for? And when I say to myself, look, I'm in Canada, northern Canada, the sun in the winter shines one hour a day, two hours a day, you can forget solar. It's minus 20 in the winter, minus 40 in the winter. There's ice building up on my wind turbine blades. My wind turbine efficiency have fallen right back because these blades are coated in ice. You can forget wind. If I'm in northern Canada, I can't use renewable power. The hydro dams are frozen. On the other hand, I've got plentiful natural gas. And I've got the potential to do carbon capture and storage. So the attraction of doing blue hydrogen in an environment like that is very, very, very high. So I think as with all of these things, let's look at the shape of the hole first of all. Is it a round hole that needs a round peg? Or is it a square hole that needs a square peg? And blue hydrogen is a square, square, it's a square peg. Wherever you see a square hole, it's going to fit. But it's not going to fit in every single hole. There's triangular holes, round holes, and hexagonal holes out there as well. So let's not squeeze it into the wrong hole. But it's a very, very useful tool in the toolkit um, where other things simply aren't possible.